What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video we're going to be getting the legendary staff, Dragonrath Terragosa's Rest. This legendary was introduced back in Cataclysm, but is still sometimes used today in a few ways, mainly in Cataclysm time walking. But anyways, I actually made a guide on how to get this like three years ago or something, but that video is, uh, well, beyond awful. So I hope to improve it in today's era, especially since the staff actually takes less time to get now due to Firelands being a flex raid and all. So before we get started on how to get this, let's talk about who can get this legendary and what the rewards for this legendary quest chain are so you can decide if it's worth going for or not. So first off, the legendary staff can be gotten by any mage, druid, and balance or resto spec, any priest, shaman, and elemental or resto spec, and any warlock. So as I said before, this legendary staff can be viably used in Cataclysm time walking, if you're into that. But it also allows you to turn into this Terragos amount if you have it equipped. And it gives you an achievement. So those are the rewards, really. It's not as rewarding as Shadowmourne, I will admit, but it is something to go for if you get bored, really. Now just some things about the mount that it allows you to turn into. This mount can only be used on the tune you have the legendary staff on because it isn't actually listed on the mount panel and you do have to right click the staff to turn into the mount. So with that being said, this mount does not count towards any mount achievement. So with all that being said, in this video I will detail the best route to take and what to exactly do so this legendary quest chain doesn't take up to like 6 months of your time. So there's two ways to start this quest. One of the ways is, well, first off, make sure you're one of the classes mentioned before and in the appropriate spec. Walk into Firelands, it doesn't matter what difficulty, and kill the Molten Lord at the start of the instance and the quest Your Time Has Come will appear. This will tell you to speak to Korra Dormi for Alliance or Zero Dormi for Horde. Now if this quest didn't pop up for you when you killed the Molten Lord, then just Go to your respective NPC and they should have a quest for you anyways called a legendary engagement. Corridormi is in the portal room and Stormwind and Zero Dormi can be found in Gromosh Hold. Then you'll be asked to go to the Caverns of Time and talk to Anachronos at the Caverns of Time. A small cutscene will play, then Anachronos will give you the quest All Sing Eye. This is the first of three collection quests. Yes? This chain has three collection quests to it. This will require you to get 25 Eternal Embers from Firelands, plus three Sands of Time. So let's go to Sands of Time first. You're going to go and take the portal to Oldham from your faction capital, and then fly to the very northwest corner of Oldham. You don't have to talk to Zodormi to revert it back, you can just fly straight there. You're going to speak to Yasmin and buy three Sands of Time for 3k each, so a total of 9k. And then you can head to Firelands. Now once you get to Firelands, you want to enter it on normal difficulty, just hear me out here, just enter it on normal difficulty and kill all the bosses for the Eternal Embers. Each boss will drop one Eternal Embers and they have an 80% chance to do so. Now Ragnaros will drop two of them. So once you've ran the instance on normal, you want to leave it. There's a fire portal by the bridge at the start of Major Domo's area to port to the start, and you want to enter the instance on heroic difficulty. You can do that now. Since Firelands became a flex raid, it's gained the flex raid lockout, meaning you can get stuff from normal and heroic, which drastically reduces the time it takes to get this legendary staff versus before. But anyways, kill the bosses on heroic for a chance at your eternal embers. I got 16 on my first week, and it took me four clears to get all 25 embers, which is two weeks. Now on your last run for Eternal Embers, if you didn't kill Shanix, Bethtalak, Ryolith, or Elisrazor, then just leave them alive and go to the next part so you can use them for the delegation quest a little later on. If you did kill them, it's not a big deal. I mean, I did. You'll then head back to the Caverns of Time to Anachronos to turn your quest in. He breathes on an orb and then gives you the quest on a wing and a prayer. So make sure you loot the orb and head to Caldera in Borean Tundra in Northrend. A small cutscene will play and you'll meet Terragosa. Then she gives you the quest through a glass darkly, which tells you to go into the Nexus. So go ahead and do that and you'll be in a solo scenario with Terragosa. Just follow the scenario until you get to this dragon, you then defeat him, and then you'll turn in your quest and get the quest Actionable Intelligence. And this quest will want you to go to Mount Hyjal to speak to Kallik. So you go there and he isn't here for me. Now this might change for a future expansion or whatever, but if you don't see Kallik in Mount Hyjal, then you want to complete a small quest line that was introduced in 8.2, which starts a fresh trauma. It's like a three quest chain. So talk to Magni in the Chamber of Heart for the quest, then meet him at Mount Hyjal. And you'll have to collect some Azerite by killing monsters 
and a few other things. And then when that's all done, you have to wait a few moments and Kallik will spawn right here at Mount Hygel. So talk to him to continue your legendary quest chain. You'll end up getting the quest Delegation, which might have some difficulty to it if you're doing it solo. It is possible, but you'll see what I mean. So you have to complete a few tasks involving the first four bosses of the raid. So you may have to wait till the next week for your raid lockout to reset. Otherwise, as I mentioned before, if you have any of the first four still alive, then you can go ahead on this quest. Otherwise, just wait for the raid lockout. So I'm currently on my third week of this chain. Enter the raid and we're going to head to Beth Talak first. Although it was my first run of the week, I decided to enter the raid on Heroic just so the bosses would have more health because it is very important to complete this quest chain as fast as possible to not kill any of the first four bosses while doing delegation. So for Beth Talak, I actually took off all of my gear to make sure something didn't accidentally AoE her or kill her or whatever and I ran up and just melee her to start the fight. So in this fight, you'll be creating a charged focus which is needed for the delegation quest and the first four bosses have their own versions of the charged focus. For Beth Talak, you're going to be waiting a bit until a cinder web drone spawns. Kill the drone and it will drop three pieces of chitin, they're fragments. You want to pick up all three of these by clicking on them. Once you do that, right click on it in your inventory to create a dull chitinous focus. Then you want to wait for a cinder web spinner to spawn and kill it so you can click the web it drops to go up to the top platform where Beth Talak is. Then just wait. Every minute and a half, Beth Talak will cast Smoldering Devastation. If you have DBM or big wigs or something, you'll see the timer for it. Otherwise, it just happens when she reaches zero and Energy. As soon as she starts casting it, right click your dull focus to place it on the ground and before it goes off it might kick you down to the ground so just kill another spinner to go up and click your charged focus. That is one out of four. And as I mentioned before, it's very important to not kill Beth Talak, so we're gonna kill ourselves to get out of the fight. Just keep going up using spinners and jumping down to die from fall damage. Now let's head to Ryolith for the next charge focus. I still have all my gear off, although there will be nothing in this fight to attack, but I'd recommend doing that to be safe. Just run up to him and it will automatically start the encounter. Now around the edges of the room, there will be Rhyolite fragments that will spawn and you need to get three of them. It did take me like three minutes of being in the encounter. This one can be kind of annoying to do due to how slow the fragments spawn and there's adds that spawn that will hurt you. I'd actually suggest killing those and there's volcanoes which will constantly spit stuff out at you. So when you see a fragment, you may have to just repeatedly click on it until you can get the cast off since damage does cancel it. Now during the Ryleth fight, he will move forward. I did actually try to dot up one of his feet. Yeah, remember how I said there would be nothing in this fight to attack? I lied. Well anyways, I would dot up his feet to make him turn so he didn't hit the outer edge of the lava, but I did let him hit the lava to see how bad it would be, and it didn't really matter. It does increase the damage the fight does, so you can see the stuff was kind of hurting me now, but if you do die during this fight, it's fine. It's better to die than to kill him, and then you can learn on what to do for the next attempt. And if you do think your dots might be killing Ryolith, you can step into the lava and die very quickly. But anyways, once you get three fragments, right click them in your inventory to turn it into a dull rhyolite focus. Then just run up under him and wait for him to cast Concussive Stomp. He'll stop for a few moments and lift up his foot. Immediately click your dull focus to place it under him. It doesn't matter which foot he lifts up, just place it under him and he will stomp down and charge the focus. Then click it to pick it up. That's two out of four. Then run into the lava to die. Now to a list resort. So I do still have my armor off just in case, but when you start the fight, you want to just chill for a bit until you see two eggs spawn and birds hatch out of them. Just immediately kill these and each time an egg hatches there will be a pyre shell fragment that spawns. You need three of these fragments, but two eggs spawn at a time. So pick up the first two fragments and wait around again for a couple minutes until the next egg spawn. Now any night elf adds in this fight, you can go ahead and kill it like the herald of burning end right here now when the next egg spawn just kill the two birds and pick up your third fragment right click the fragments to create a dull pyre shell focus then just wait around again when the fire tornadoes happen this is phase two you actually don't want to place the dull focus until phase three although i placed it in phase two for whatever reason but it didn't really matter since the dull fragment stays on the ground for like two minutes or something now after the fire tornadoes a lizard will hit the ground and go ahead and place your dull fragment this is phase three and just wait here then she'll 
will wake up and start hitting you till she gets to max energy and then she pukes out a bunch of feathers and charges your focus. Run up and pick it up and now you have three out of four. Now you want to die. So run up and grab a feather and just fly straight up in the air and right click your flying buff off to fall to your death. Now for Shanix. This is the most difficult focus to get. So if you're a mage or a warlock, this will actually be pretty easy for you since you can indefinitely have a pet out. Mages will just need to go frost. Now for shamans, priests, and druids, it will be a little more difficult. Shamans will have to use earth elemental, priests will use their shadow fiend or mind bender, and druids will need the force of nature talent to spawn treants. This will put another body into the fight to allow Shanix to spawn crystal traps, which are needed to get to this charged focus. So I still have all my gear off. Shanix pats in a big circle around the original area of Firelands. I waited by the pathway to the entrance until I pulled up. Now this may take some RNG, but Rage Face will be the most annoying part of this because if he decides to rage on your face at a non-opportune time, then you have to wait for like 20 or 30 seconds for him to stop and he might immediately do it again. It will take some time, but I made sure to pull Shanix on my mount and I ran a bit towards the path to the entrance until I was by the scorpions. I then placed my Force of Nature by Shanix I didn't put it directly on them because they last for 10 seconds and I wanted them to travel a bit to damage Shanix. Come to find out they do about 30% of his health, so that's something to keep in mind. It will obviously be different in future expansions, but anyways, as soon as another entity enters the fight, Shanix will throw out a crystal trap. You want to stand on the trap. Even though the dogs are fighting you, make sure to get in the trap and not to them. Now the trap does last a minute and a half, so you just sit there and let them wail on you for that time. When the trap finally breaks, an ember stone fragment will spawn. Keep clicking it until you're able to get the cast off and pick it up. Now you have to do that two more times. Once you've picked it up, summon your thing again, so he spawns another crystal trap. I just put the trance on top of him this time since I knew they do about 20 to 30 percent of his health, so I knew that putting trance on top of him would not do the other 70 percent that he had remaining. And when he spawns the second crystal trap, stand in it again, wait it out again, and grab your second fragment. Now I try to make a run for the instance portal to reset the fight since I felt like using my trance again might possibly kill him, but Rage Face did what he does best and stunned me for 30 seconds. Jumping off the side of the Firelands, even though it's closer doesn't always work it will like port you back up most of the time but anyways do this a third time to get your third fragment then go ahead and right click the fragments to create a dull ember stone focus now kill rage face yep kill rage face he can massively mess you up if he stuns you at a bad time while trying to charge the focus and heal up if you can you don't want to die yet if you do die you still have the dull focus so don't worry about that now to charge it you have to be quick with it Wait for the hurl spear timer, and as soon as he picks the location to hurl the spear, put the dull focus on the location. It does take a couple of seconds for him to throw the spear, and he will throw it at the dull focus to charge it. Pick it up, and you have the last foci for delegation. Now, kill yourself. With Rage Face dead, it's pretty easy. And this is what I meant by it teleporting you back up when you try to jump off, but if you keep trying, you will manage it. So now that you have all four foci, you'll go to this other location of Firelands that can only be reached while on this quest. So run up the left side almost by Beth Talax area, dodge Shanix, you don't want to pull him, and you'll find this Path of Corruption area. Run up to the Circle of Thorns and use your foci to create this portal. Then kill all the elves and click the branch of Nordrazil in the center. A giant burning tree will spawn, so take him out and you'll turn into a giant tree. And Volcanus will spawn. Take him out and you get the title Blessed Defender of Nordrazil for two hours. And then grab the branch of Nordrazil. This is the first level of the legendary staff. Once you have that, you'll head back to Northrend to Amber Ledge to find Caligos. He does some stuff to the branch of Nordrazil, so you're going to talk to it to complete that quest. And then talk to Caligos, and the quest emergency extraction will open up. Speak to him again, and a short little cutscene will play where Turgosa gets messed up. Talk to Calic to get the quest at one, and talk to him again to honor Tergos. Then you'll talk to him again to get the quest Time Grows Short, which is your second collection quest. This requires you to get to 1,000 Seething Cinders. So just go back to Firelands and do just that. Hopefully you didn't kill any of the bosses while doing delegation to optimize your Seething Cinders drops, but kill all the bosses and get the Cinders. Remember, you do get two runs a week, normal and heroic. Each boss will drop around 20, but then Ragnaros will drop around 60, and the amounts between normal and heroic doesn't seem to be different. So this did take me six clears before I was able to get all 1000, which means an additional three weeks, and I got it on my second clear of the third week. 
Lucky me. Now once you get your 1000th Seething Cinder, go ahead and leave the raid so you can use the remaining bosses for your next collection quest. You'll go back to Caldera again and turn them all into Caligos. And he will give you the quest Alignment. Talk to him again to watch a cutscene and then turn the quest in and get the Rune Staff of Nordrazil, which is the second level of the Legendary Staff. Then accept the quest Heart of Flame, which is the final part to the chain and your last collection quest. This will require you to get 250 Smoldering Essences and then at the end you'll obtain the Heart of Flame from Ragnaros. So go back to Firelands and finish your current run to siphon the essences from the bosses. But Ragnaros cannot be siphoned on Normal or Heroic. Even though he does have a corpse on Heroic, he can can still not be siphoned. So, lucky me again, I got my last seething cinder off Major Domo, so I wasn't able to get any smoldering essences that week. How siphoning bosses goes, you'll kill the boss, then click the boss, then right click the rune staff of Nordrazil to siphon the smoldering essence from the boss. You do have to equip the staff before you're able to actually siphon it. This can be easily forgotten, so it's very important you do not forget to do this, or you might extend your time getting this legendary by an extra week, even if you forget to siphon one boss. So I suggest putting this rune staff on your bar. Now each boss in normal will give around 6 essences, and each boss on heroic will give around 12. So just make sure you do both runs each week. And my very last boss during essence was off major domo on my second run of that week which is very good for me considering Ragnaros doesn't give any essences. So to now get the Heart of Flame, you're going to go to Ragnaros and defeat him. The Heart of Flame is not looted off of him, but it is kind of hidden behind him, kind of like under his corpse. You have to click on it to pick it up. And now you're pretty much done with the quest chain. You'll go and speak to Halagosa, which is either in Gromash Hold or the Cathedral District of Stormwind, and then accept the final quest, the Stuff of Legends. Follow her and then you're made into a giant spectacle in Orgrimmar or Storm. Wind. The blue dragonflight sees you, everyone in the city sees you and knows you completed the quest chain. It's pretty cool. Some RP happens and then you finally get your legendary staff and your achievement. So there you go. The last part of the quest chain took me an additional two weeks to do, meaning this quest chain took me seven weeks to complete. So it is now on par with taking the same amount of time as Shadow Morn. That's a lot better than before because the first time I did this, it took me 11 weeks. But anyways guys, that's the entire video on how to get the legendary staff, and this is the mount it allows you to turn into. As I said at the start, only the character you do this on can turn into that mount, and you do have to be equipping the staff to turn into it, and it does not count towards any mount achievements. I know this might burst your bubble, but I'm just giving facts here. But anyways guys, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful at all to you, then feel free to leave a like on it so you can sub to the channel for more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.